All right, so now that we've talked about our biggest challenge being each other. We're going to get a sitting. Like I said. We are Becca and Matt, and we are currently traveling the United States in a 13-foot camper with our two cats, Grace and Peach. We started in California and are currently making our way to the east towards North Carolina. Be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. See you next week. <laughs> What's hey. up everybody? <laughs> I'm Becca. This is Matt. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> We're Becca and Matt and we've been traveling across the country in our 13 foot burrow camper trailer with our two cats, Peach and Grace. Yep. And we just finished our first part of our journey. We are in North Carolina after coming all the way from California. And we figured before we hit the road again for part two, we do a quick recap of our first leg of the journey. So we thought we'd start off with the route that we took. So we started off in California, specifically San Jose area, and we drove down the Pacific Coast Highway through Morro Bay and Malibu before ending up in San Diego for Christmas. Yep. So uh, San Diego, the big highlight for us was the zoo. Yep. It was actually a lot of fun to be able to spend Christmas day wandering around there. And if you haven't had a chance, it's definitely worth it. If you have more than a day, if you don't have more than a day, just enjoy San Diego and try the zoo another time. Cause it really deserves a whole day for itself. Uh, so there's so much there to check out, uh, but the zoo was definitely fun. I mean, it was a rainy Christmas day, but it was something special. Yeah. And by the way, every time we talk about um, something that we filmed in one of our videos, we'll have it linked up here for your reference. <laughs> All right. So after California, we went to, oh no, we almost forgot. We went to Anza Borrego State Park in California before we left the state. We didn't even know this existed. It kind of just, we stumbled upon it by chance. It happens to be the biggest state park in California and maybe even in the country, we have yet to confirm. Um, but either way, it's a beautiful place. We ended up doing the what trail? Uh, the Palm Tree Oasis. It was a awesome little trail that went into the canyon and then just opened up into a giant oasis of palm trees. Uh, fun fact, well, not so fun fact. It caught on fire a few years ago, so it's actually miraculously growing back. So they say it won't be what it used to be, but it's still uh, something you should definitely check out if you're in the area. Yeah, it's very beautiful, very surreal. You're in this desert, the mountain landscape, and then all of a sudden you stumble upon palm trees and water. It's a pretty cool experience. All right, so from there, we drove to Arizona. The big highlight of our trip was staying in Picaco Peak State Park. You can actually hike up to the peak, which we did in one of our videos. But I think for Arizona, it was just, the state just has amazing landscape, beautiful sunsets. It was very enjoyable to drive through it. And I definitely want to go back and spend more time there. Yeah, definitely. We checked out the Grand Canyon on the way out to the West Coast originally. So this time we took a little bit of a different route. And uh, that's why we saw Mount Picaco instead. And so we didn't take your normal route through Arizona, but it was uh, beautiful nonetheless. Yeah. So then after that, we went to New Mexico where we visited our first national park of the year, White Sands National Park. Uh, you can't actually stay overnight in the park. So we did stay in another state park 30 minutes away, but that was fine. Not an issue. I would say White Sands is a very playful national park. There's not a ton of hiking options. There's a couple of trails. Um, we did end up doing the longer one, which at the time of the year we were then there, which was in January, it wasn't too bad. I can see it not being as easy on a hot summer day, um, but for some, I mean, for winter, it was fun to just wander around the dunes and play around. <laughs> it's very easy to get lost there. Uh, it's just nothing but sand and you're following orange poles throughout. So it was uh, very vast and I can see why you know, they have a lot of warnings for people during the summertime because it could get easily hot. But. Yeah, you definitely want to know where you're at, bring plenty of water, don't underestimate the heat. Even in January, it was very long hours in the sun and I definitely felt it afterwards. But one thing that we didn't do, but definitely sounds fun, is you can rent sleds and actually go sledding down the dunes. You honestly don't even need to rent anything. We slid down them just by walking <laughs> down them. Um, but we did see a lot of people doing that and that looked like fun. All right, the next state was Texas. So um, as most of us know, Texas is very large. Girl, great. Okay, so where were we? <laughs> Texas is very large, and uh, Big Bend was definitely remote. It's at the very southern tip of Texas, shares the border with Mexico, divided by the Rio Grande. 
uh, it was again beautiful vast views that were wide open and you could see everything from you know the river to the mountains some of the darkest nights we've ever experienced definitely it's, and coldest yeah that's true uh, very cool temperatures but it was cool to be somewhere where there's such little human light i guess <laughs> I don't human know light <laughs> human life uh, i think we woke up to the sound of coyotes cat. Coyotes, in cows. Big Bend, yeah. cows. <laughs> Our memories was... are a little bit off here. No, it, it was very beautiful to be in Texas. A lot of long driving days that kind of started getting to us and you really can't avoid it because that's how stretched out everything is. Um, but besides that, we only saw a fraction of the state. Yeah, you would definitely question yourself driving to Big Bend. I know I did as to why we're even going. It was so far south, but once you're inside of the park, it was definitely worth it. It's, yeah. You just got to keep reminding yourself that on the drive there. It was our second national park of the year, and it's definitely one of the more remote national parks. So I knew I wanted to go ahead and get that off our bucket list because who knows when we'll have the chance right. to do it again and it is very far out from even the nearest airport so it is a little bit harder to get to so i'm glad we did it and fun fact they actually have their own landfill inside the park that's right i think only one of two or three national parks have their own landfill and this one did which when you see how far away it is from everything it kind of makes sense but i thought that was unique every thursday all the rangers gather around and jump on the trash mm -hmm. we got a video of that right here so after Big Ben, we did stay briefly in San Antonio. Um, we did this t touristy thing, walking on the river walk, checking out the sites. Very easy stay for a quick afternoon. Um, and then from there, we went to Houston to stay with family and friends. We honestly didn't see any of Houston. We just worked and relaxed, but it was still a nice visit. And then that was the end of our Texas trip. So we still have a lot more that we need to see in Texas. We know that, but it'll be for another time. Definitely. All right. So after Texas, we just drove through Alabama and Mississippi. We didn't stay over. Um, you honestly wouldn't even know you were driving through those states if you weren't paying attention. So we'll definitely have to go back and actually explore those two states a little better. But our mission was to get to New Orleans, Louisiana. My parents actually met there, so I felt like it was only right for me to go see where it kind of all started, at least for me. <laughs> um, and we had a really good time there. Yeah, New Orleans was definitely cool to check out. Uh, we stayed at an Airbnb because it was one of our work weeks. Um, and so one thing we underestimated was the ease of bringing the camper into the city and parking it inside the tiny driveway off a busy street. Mm -hmm. So we learned our lesson there, but it was definitely beautiful being able to walk the French Quarter into Bourbon Street and to check everything out, see Coop's place. Uh, so we definitely had a good time there. I think next time we'll try to travel a little lighter in, <laughs> into the city. Uh, so we could spend more time. Yeah, we definitely um, figured, oh, we have a small camper. We could fit in a driveway, and that we did, but there's a lot of traffic, and it's not so much getting there, but how do you get out? <laughs> so that was a little bit challenging. And there's actually campgrounds not far from the city um, that we could have easily stayed at. We just thought it'd be fun to stay in an Airbnb, which it was, but I think next time we'd either stay in a campground or go camperless, I guess. All right, after New Orleans, we went to Florida. So Florida was probably our longest stay in one state on this trip. We were there for about three weeks. We started in Pensacola, went a little bit inland to a place called Devil's Den Springs before our way to Tampa. And if you have a chance, do check out Devil's Den Springs. It's a very unique place. It's literally a spring that just opens up into the earth. You go basically into a cave and you can swim in 70 two degree weather. I mean, weather, water. <laughs> <laughs> it was it a was fun experience, very unique. Yeah, it used to be farmland back in the day and then all the local hooligans would sneak onto the property and just trash it while they swam in the creek. No, the farmers trashed it on purpose because they didn't want those kids swimming in it. Regardless, but now they're monetizing it. So yeah. shout out to capitalism. There's also a little <laughs> Japanese garden right next door that was uh, very cute as well. Mm -hmm. And they had cows. That's right, they did have cows. They weren't the friendliest cows, which is a little bit questionable because you have to drive by them to get to the garden, but um, they were fun to film. And I did want to add the Devil's Den Springs does not have trash in it anymore. It's all clean, no worries. All right, so from there, we went to Tampa to stay with family again. Um, we did do a day trip to Anna Marie Island one day, which was absolutely beautiful. 
And then from there, we went down to Naples, Florida, not to not be mistaken, Italy. yes, with Italy. <laughs> um, that's when we actually kind of realized we we're starting to lose it. I had a mini breakdown, which I unfortunately have documented in film for all of eternity. Um, <laughs> but once we were there, we kind of regrouped again and then went to our third national park, Everglades. Yeah, the Everglades was cool. I think we uh, definitely wish we had more time to spend there. Mm -hmm. And then definitely we wanted to venture further south to the Keys as well. But uh, we felt like that was a little bit of a stretch to tow the camper all the way down to the Keys. So we have to save that one for another time. Yeah. Also, we were in Florida in prime time season. So everything was really expensive and also booked. So we That's were true. having a hard time finding places. Um, but we did go to Miami. Um, I had pretty low... <laughs> what were we talking about? We're in Florida during peak season, so it was very expensive, and also a lot of people were there. So that was part of the reason why we ended up staying where we did, because we were just trying to find a place to stay. We did go to Miami, which I had pretty much no expectations for, but ended up being one of the highlights of our trip. Um, I really enjoyed going to Miami South Beach. It was the only time the water was warm enough to go in and I still daydream about that afternoon. It was just clear waters and gentle waves and a little bit more people than I needed, but I'm sure not nearly as crowded as it can get. Um, so definitely a very cool city to get a chance to explore. And again, we didn't nearly have enough time, but it's definitely on my list of one of the places to go back to. All right, so from Miami Beach, we continued along the coast on the east side of Florida and there we stopped in Fort Pierce which was a very cute little town totally unexpected we have a video of that and then we stayed in Tomoka State Park which is probably one of our top five state park stays of our trip it just felt like you could just sp spend the whole afternoon there which we did um, and very lucky that we had a chance to stay and then from there we did a brief stop in Amelia Island before venturing into Georgia. Right, then in Georgia, we only did um, a short visit. We went to Jekyll Island and, Island and St. Simons Island, yep. right next to each other, very easy to get to, pretty different. Jekyll Island is a little bit quieter, and then St. Simons is busier, more touristy, but both are beautiful and very easy to explore. And sadly, we only drove through Savannah this time. I kind of forgot about it, and because I had my eyes on Charleston, they are all very close together, so you could easily drive by Savannah to make it to Charleston, but Savannah is definitely on my list to go back to. I've been to Savannah before, he hasn't though, and of course it's a beautiful city to explore, so we'll have to go back for that. It's cute to even drive through though too. Yes, we did drive through it. And then we're in South Carolina. So in South Carolina, we of course stopped in Charleston, we haven't been in a very long time and I forgot how much I love the city. It was a beautiful day that we picked and I'm pretty proud of my route. I got us to see all the touristy stays without too much walking. I think it was a total of an hour and a half of walking in a whole day. We ate a cute French place, like a little cafe, and then we sat outside and listened to music and then we went to a rooftop bar. It was the perfect way to spend the day. If you're ever there, check out the Citrus Club at the top of the Dunberry? Dewberry? Dewberry. Dewberry, I think. We have it again in the video for reference. All right, so after Charleston, we went to a place called Huntington State Beach. This is not too far away from Polly's Island, if you're familiar with the area. I went to Polly's Island with family for several years for spring break growing up, and so it has a very special place in my heart. And Huntington, we went camping a few times at, so it's very nice to be able to explore an area that feels very much like home. Um, we both grew up in North Carolina, so as we were getting closer, we definitely felt, um, I don't know, excited to be back on the East yeah. Coast. And then that essentially concludes our first section of our journey, part one. Um, from there, we hop into North Carolina. We did a brief stay in Charlotte to see family before coming to Greensboro, where we've been kind of staying put for the longest as we get ready for our second trip of the year. Part Two. Yep, stay tuned. We'll be putting a video of a tour of the camper, hopefully for next video. And then after that, we'll be doing a little film of us getting ready for part two. And then off we go. Okay, so that was um, our route essentially. And so the next thing we wanted to discuss was some of the main challenges. Challenges. <laughs> that we experienced so far living this um, camper life. So I have four things written down on my notes. I have one. It's her. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> the four things are rain, <laughs> cooking, icebox, 
and body aches. So basically we noticed that every time it rains, the camper gets really messy. And it happened to me that almost every time we traveled, that's also when it would rain, if it did at all. Which on some hands is nice, right? You're not, it's not raining when you're trying to explore a new place, but going in and out of the camper, packing up, at the end of it, everything's wet, everything's messy. It's not very fun. Not really sure if there's a solution to this. It's just something we hadn't considered beforehand. Um, I guess rain is never easy to work with and it just gets a little bit harder when you're working with a very small camper. The second challenge that we had was cooking. Um, we had a propane stove that we were gonna connect to our propane um, and we thought we'd be cooking outside, you know, all the usual camping stuff. What we didn't think about was that we were traveling in the winter, so the days are shorter. We were also going across the West Coast where it's a little bit more deserty, so we were dealing with a lot of wind, which made it pretty much impossible to cook outside. So we were kind of stuck <laughs> with cooking. Yeah, we definitely, we tried to cook outside. We parked the car right next to the camper. We put up a little, the little tarp that we do have to try to block the wind and it would just take about an hour to boil a pot of water just to like cook rice. Even. The wind would blow it out and so it was like, we, yeah, it was just not efficient at all. Right. So then in Texas, we decided when we were with family, we ordered an electric stove top because we didn't realize how often we'd be staying in campgrounds that had electric hookups. It just didn't dawn on me that that would be an option or was readily available, but then we realized it was, so we ordered one from Amazon and then we were able to start cooking inside which was really helpful. Um, but now, as we travel into the summer, I think we'll be cooking a little bit more outside again. It's not gonna be hopefully as windy and the days are longer. So either way, it's nice that you have that option, but we really wouldn't have known that until we started traveling. So I guess that's why people say don't order too much before you hit the road because you don't know what you need until you need it. All right, the next challenge is similar to cooking and that's our ice box. So that shouldn't be a surprise that having an ice box was harder than a refrigerator, but I really underestimated it. Um, I'm a leftover queen. I love making a big batch of something and having it for leftovers for a couple of days, even a week. You can't really do that with an ice box. Um, so we had a lot of food waste or just not sure what to prepare to make enough for just one meal. Um, so it was definitely hard and I think eating and cooking in general wasn't our top priority. There was just so many new things that we were dealing with. So we didn't really eat as much or as well as we would have liked. Um, a lot of more drive-throughs and eating out than we anticipated. So that's something moving forward that we're excited to put more time into now that we have a little bit more understanding of how to travel and plus the longer days, the warmer weather, it all makes it a little easier. We have a few ideas to make it better for the future, which we'll show you in the upcoming videos, um, but it's definitely something to get used to. We may one day upgrade to a refrigerator, an electric fridge, or even an electric um, cooler, but for now, we'll stick with the ice box and work with what we got. And then the last thing was body aches. Um, we're on the road a lot. We're driving a lot. We're living in small space. Yes, we are, we're pretty active. We were walking and exploring and hiking, but we were just sitting and moving our bodies differently than it's used to. And by the time we got to Greensboro, I felt like my body was breaking. I like to do this. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes this. <laughs> so really all we needed was to stretch and get some more consistent movement in our day. And I think that's something we hope we can continue with us as we get on the road again. Um, for me, that looks like doing yoga regularly and going for walks. And, you know, for him, it means maybe incorporating some more working out. And doing this. Yeah. <laughs> but if there's one thing that's hard when you're on the road, it's routine. So if anyone has suggestions for that, please let us know in the comments below. We can use the help. Yeah, one thing we do plan on bringing it are small, compact things to help. Something like a jump rope and a kettlebell. You know, something we could step outside of the camper and do. Uh, you know, we would love to bring a bike, but we just, we haven't set up a bike rack for it. The one we do have attaches to the back of the Subaru and it just makes it inconvenient getting in and out of the trunk. And so until we get one that attaches, say, to like the bumper of the burrow, uh, right now we're not bringing bikes. Yeah. One day though, be nice. But we are looking into rollerblades. Rebecca needs roller <gasps> skates with a helmet and knee pads. Wrist pads. And yep. yeah, wrist pads. Mm -hmm. Maybe so elbow. Probably something for her tailbone too. Yeah, a pillow, uh, yeah. a donut. But yeah, so those are our challenges. A lot of, most of them are not that bad and we have ideas to make them easier going forward, but they were ones that we didn't really think about going into it. So we thought we'd share it just for reference. 
Okay, so those are our challenges, and now I thought we'd share what went well. So I can't start it without mentioning the cats. The cats could have easily ended this trip as soon as it started. If they didn't enjoy it, get along, it was stressful, it would have been done. Like, they're part of us, they're our family, so if they didn't work well on the road, we wouldn't work well on the road. It should be mentioned that our cats don't like each other. One was originally mine, the other is his, they're both girls, they're very territorial so the idea that we were going to put them in a 13 foot camper was crazy for anyone that knew them but happily to say they have done amazingly well they fight less they seem to really find the camper their home at least when we're in it they do still get a little stress moving from the camper to the car and back but i think when they're in the car they're okay I'm not sure if they love it but they don't seem to hate it and then once they're in the camper, they know they're good. They settle right in and they're happy to just look out the window. Yeah, the cats actually prefer the camper over somewhere like an Airbnb. I think out of familiarity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even the car, they will run to or in if they're scared outside, but they don't enjoy being in the car, especially on a car ride. Grace will scream like she's being kidnapped. And she just wants to be on our laps, which is fine, but it's not always convenient. She just doesn't seem to settle. Peach, on the other hand, settles really quickly, but I think she's secretly a little bit more stressed. Peach will try to escape on the way to the car. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't know what she'll do once she escapes, but she knows step one is escaping. Yeah. So. She's our wild child that doesn't want to be with humans, but she really does. And then the other one can't be away from people at all. So maybe that's part of their problem. They just don't get each other, but... Needless to say, they've done really well and we're very happy about it. So we can get traveling again. The second thing that went well was our bed. So the best way to describe our bed is essentially the size of a full with a curve to it. So it's a little bit more space spacious, but I'm still surprised that two adults can comfortably sleep in it. I did a lot of research into it. I follow a lot of people that had similar campers that claimed they could do it also comfortably, but I'm happy to say that we did just fine. Um, okay, it was the winter, so maybe we were okay getting a little bit more closer and snuggling. So we'll see how that feels when it's hot and there's no air conditioning. But I definitely think the secret was the more I hang out of the bed, the happier she is. You know, if I could sleep on the floor, I think she would be thrilled. <laughs> Actually, it does help that he likes to get up early because then I get to stretch out a little bit more. But honestly, it really did work. I think the curve in the camper and then in the bed just makes it a lot easier. So that was a surprise that we're happy it went yeah. well. The next thing that surprisingly went better than expected was the fact that we don't have a bathroom. I didn't really want she us... She poops a lot. <laughs> I didn't really want to dedicate a whole space on our tiny camper just for a bathroom. And so pretty early on, I realized we could probably do without, but I was still nervous about having to rely on public restrooms, even at campgrounds. But I'm happy to say that, especially at state parks, they were very clean, very nice, and there was no issues. So yay, we don't need a bathroom. Yeah, I definitely think we could do a whole uh, Becca's bathroom review. <laughs> video series uh just based off this trip alone so if you're interested let us know and we will be more than happy to rank the bathrooms <laughs> he's kind of joking but seriously like i'm all about that like i want to know how the bathrooms are maybe it's a ladies thing like we have to sit down more often so if you seriously would want to know how the <laughs> bathrooms are i'd be more than happy to share and i might do it even if no one wants me to but the overall synopsis is i definitely think state park bathrooms are the best i think it uh because it's campground host cleaning it because they're campers themselves they know what it's like to have a dirty bathroom so i definitely think they probably uh, you know, go the extra mile. When yeah, it, so. it definitely seems like that way. I mean, I guess when you're cleaning a bathroom that you're gonna use, you probably put a little bit more time into it. Anyways, bathrooms have been great. And then the last thing that went surprisingly well was our Wi-Fi or cellular connection. We both work on the road, or at least try to, and so our fear was what if the Wi-Fi just doesn't work, yeah. right? Um, and it was hard to tell by doing research and asking other people if it was possible or not. And once again, it's kind of those things that you really don't know until you try it yourself, but we have been really lucky. We have a Verizon mobile hotspot, right? Mm -hmm. And that has not failed us once. Um, of course, we're not trying to work when we're in a national park. Yes, of course, those more remote places are not gonna have good cellular service and you really need that cellular service to be able to connect through the hotspot. But when we're trying to work, we just pay attention to where we're going, 
maybe state parks, maybe a campground not too far from yeah. the city. Um, but honestly, even the state parks have been very convenient because with our hotspot, we usually aren't remote enough to that be an issue. And it's been working just fine for us. So. Yeah, and because, you know, it is 2022, most of the time you can just Google where you're going and see what kind of coverage there is there. Now, with the hotspot, it's not going to just miraculously give you, you know, cellular coverage in the middle of nowhere. I think Big Bend was probably the most remote place we were, and there was absolutely no service. I mean, yeah. the only place to get service was at the visitor center where you could connect to their Wi-Fi. And Which even actually then, is was, surprising that yeah. they had that. So that concludes our part one recap. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We are slowly getting ready to hit the road again for part two of our trip. This time we are continuing our journey up north into the New England area. We honestly don't have much planned except we are going to stay in Acadia State, or I mean, I'm sorry, Acadia National Park in Maine, which we're very excited about. We'll be seeing um, some more family along the way. And yeah, that's pretty much all we have figured out for now. But please join us once we hit the road because I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun. And stay tuned for next week where we'll give a tour of the camper and kind of a inside look at what everybody's been wanting to see. So if there's something <laughs> specific, go ahead and let us know. and We'll try to incorporate that into the video. Or outside of that, just uh, be prepared to see every inch of 13 feet. Yep, we're going to try to show you everything there is, how we pack, etc. I know I lived for these videos before I had my own camper, so I'm trying to just return the favor if there's anyone out there that now is curious about ours. Um, but in the future, definitely let us know if there's any videos you want us to cover. We're more than happy to share different topics. You know, it could be anything like more details on how we work on the road, like Wi-Fi or how it's like traveling with cats. But let us know in the comments below. And don't forget, of course, to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to our channel. Give this video a thumbs up and then we'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys. Bye.